Hey guys, well, there's no Christmas tree, there's no ornaments, there's nothing Christmassy in the background of where I'm sitting because today has been all work and I don't have time to sit by the Christmas tree, frankly. I just have time for this hat. I've been making bread here, let me show you. Um, making it for somebody else, 30 small loaves so that people can share it. There's more rising under there. There's more rising over here. I've also been doing beans, canning beans, lots and lots of beans. There's more in the canner, there's more to be canned. So, no time for all the fluffy stuff, no time for sitting by the tree. But I do have a short Christmas story for you. So, let's go ahead and read it. It is from the guy's greatest Christmas stories again. And it is called, I had it, really, I had it. It is called, yes, it is called Jill's Holiday Heart Hotel. I couldn't believe what I was hearing. Mom, Dad, this is the worst idea I have ever heard, I protested. I know, we've never done anything like this before, Dad admitted. Working with the homeless will take some getting used to. But your mom and I think that this will be a very good way for us to serve as a family. We have so much, Jill, Mom added. This new house, security, God even helped us find a wonderful church after our move. Obviously, Mom and Dad saw things a little differently than I did. I launched into my diatribe. It's bad enough that Dad's transfer brought us to a place where we don't know anyone and that this will be our first Christmas without Uncle, Aunt, and Graham. But now we're supposed to send a whole, our whole holiday hanging out with homeless people? Do I have any say in this matter? The say that you have in this matter, said Dad, is what kind of Christmas you'll have. That will be decided by what sort of experience you allow this to be. Jill, said my traitorous little brother Brian, it might be cool. I said nothing, let out a huge sigh, and retreated to my room. I still had presents to wrap. Mom, Dad, and Brian kept talking about our upcoming Christmas, but I never joined in these conversations. On Christmas Eve, Mom approached me as I was adding whipped cream to my hot chocolate. Honey, let's have a little talk. What are your thoughts on Christmas? Plopping down at the kitchen table, I let out an exasperated sigh. Mom, I never wanted to move. Think of everything we've given up this Christmas. I know we needed to move here, but I've never spent a Christmas without, without Aunt Myrna's Christmas Kiwi Punch. Honey, you never liked that drink, Mom remarked. I know it's family you're missing, not Kiwi Punch. And we'll see plenty of family. Just not this Christmas. Am I supposed to change my mind and suddenly be happy about all this, Mom? No, just open-minded. Dad and I have really prayed about this. Just open your heart a little. All right, I'll try. But I have to say this is hard, Mom. All I can ask is that you try, and I believe you will. She hugged me. Now I have some baking to finish. Do you want to help me? At least that hasn't changed, I said with a smile. A couple of evenings earlier at our church's special Christmas program, we had been challenged to make room, a home, for other people in our hearts. It was a nice thought, but I wondered how I could open my heart as a shelter for others in the same way the stable had been opened to Jesus. As we entered the food distribution center on Christmas morning, I noticed many people who looked like they would be thrilled for the shelter of any home, even the chilly space of my heart. For a moment I felt nervous and awkward. Would I offend these people by saying the wrong thing? My thoughts were cut off by a woman who rushed to greet us. Are you here to help today? We need help in the kitchen preparing and help on the serving line. You, she looked at me. Would you set tables and help to clear, darling? I was surprised that so many people had come here on Christmas Day. For most of the afternoon I stayed busy clearing and setting tables. But late in the day, things slowed down, and I kept passing by a family of four who reminded me of my own. 
The energetic woman who had greeted us told me that I was welcome to take a break. So I mustered up my courage and approached that family. Uh, excuse me, uh, I know this is your Christmas dinner, but I was wondering if I could sit with you for a few minutes. I don't really know anybody here. They welcomed me and even offered me part of their dinner. I just moved here, I said, and told them about the move. We were also transferred, the mother replied. We moved ourselves and everything we had so that I could keep working, the man piped up. But then I got laid off. We were strangers in an unknown place and without family or friends when we noticed when we needed them most. We ended up like this, the woman said. I was surprised to hear myself say the words that I spoke next. I don't think this is how you've ended up. This is just where you are now, I encouraged. They seemed to appreciate what I said. My family serves at the food center about twice a month now. The last time I saw the family I met at, met at Christmas, they told me they'd saved enough money to move back to their hometown. There's work there, Mr. Andrews had said with excitement, and familiar schools. Believe it or not, part of my heart envied them. I often think of returning to my old home, but moving here helped me learn to post a vacancy room available sign on my heart and to open it to strangers. That change of attitude may turn out to be the best Christmas gift I ever received. Oh, I love that. We definitely need room in our hearts for other people, people who are different than us, people who think differently, people who act differently, people who have challenges, everybody. We need room in our hearts, and I pray that we will all have that room in our hearts this Christmas season and every single day of the year. Merry Christmas. See you tomorrow.